the five Tibetan rites. Uh, so the five exercises that you do 21 times. You can modify that um, if you're, as you start doing these, realize you can't do the full 21 in, 21 in one go. That's absolutely fine. You can just build yourself up and progress, ideally getting to the five exercises, one after the other, and you do each exercise 21 times. I'm going to show you the primary exercise with some variants. You have your arms parallel to the floor. Let's say we're going to go to the right hand side to start. We're going to look to the right hand. I want to keep my right foot anchored in the center of the mat to help with this because it's going to start to build as in the dizziness. So I look to the hand and then I'm going to start to rotate. One complete revolution is where I started. Let's say I'm going to do three of these just to start. And how many are you going to do when you finish? Bring the hands back into the center, prayer posture hands and look to your thumbs. This is going to help calm and balance the spinning motion in your sort of mind's eye. Once you're happy, You'll then take the arms back out. You'll look to the left hand, anchor the left foot in the centre, and we'll go back the opposite way. So we're always balancing ourselves with these. So when I've done my three, just for demonstration purposes, I come back to the centre, feeling a bit dizzy. Pause and look at my thumbs. It generally works. You may not believe it till you try it, but it really does work by just focusing on those thumbs. And that's the first right complete. If you don't want to do the full variant, or you can't do the full variant as a rotation, you can just stand still and rotate yourself, getting the feeling of a slight dizziness coming from that. Just if nothing else, mobilizing the spine. Not quite as effective, but is an alternative all the same. Right number two, it's going to be a leg raise. So particularly with this one, we want to press the lower back into the floor, particularly when we lower the legs. So once we're down, ready for right number two, arms are parallel to the, or on the floor, head and shoulders off, so you want to not lift from the neck, lift from the shoulders. We're going to lower the legs down, pressing the lower back into the floor and come back up. And again, I'll just do three for demonstration purposes, coming back up and then repeat. So alternatives to that. So the really far and extreme of this, if you can't do those at all, you're very welcome to do some crunches, sliding the arms up and down. Another way around this is simply when your legs are above you and your head is extended, just not to lower as far, coming back up. Or if you prefer, head and shoulders off the deck, extend one leg, come back in, do the opposite side, all the time pressing the lower back. Right number three, it's going to be a baby camel. So you come down onto your knees, knees hip width apart, you can have the feet untucked or tucked, I prefer them tucked. Place the palms on the buttocks, fingers facing down, draw the elbows and shoulder blades together. Have this feeling of extension through you. When you're ready, you're then going to squeeze the buttocks, press hips forward, draw the shoulder blades down, look up to the ceiling, and then come back up. And then repeat that three times. Squeeze the buttocks, press hips forward, coming back up. And we'll do one more, and coming back. If you want to add to that, then we're going to do the little back bend, and then you're going to untuck the toes and go into a little forward fold. Coming back up, long back, retuck the toes, squeeze the buttocks. If you feel unsteady coming down, just release the hands so you don't face plant. Long back, core engaged, retuck the toes, and then repeat. So I've given you an alternative to go up in essence with that rather than going down. The alternative really is just don't go as deep if your back doesn't like it, particularly your lumbar spine. But by really squeezing the buttocks and pressing the hips forward, engaging the thighs, you're going to find it's going to protect the low back as well. Get that feeling of drawing the shoulder blades down the back as well. Right to number four is going to be a hip raise. We're going to start with our shoulders over the hips. Find a position which works best for your shoulders and you'll quickly find out which way is. Probably palms down, fingers facing out to the side is probably enough. Splay the fingers, grip into the mat, bends in the elbows. I'd recommend you have your heels in the deck so your legs are far enough away because if they're too close, then you're going to find that your legs are going to be at funny angles. So what we're going to do from here is you lift our buttocks off the deck and we lift up, squeeze the buttocks, draw the knees towards each other and back underneath. Squeeze and raise. You want to get a flat table. Now, if it's too much for you to get your shoulders underneath your hips and you have two blocks, for example, you can always use the bit of height to make it more accessible for you. So you can then still get the full range of motion. Like so. Or if you don't have those, you can just have your hands on the deck and just have your buttocks on the deck in front of your shoulders. Just doing your hip raise. Try not to touch or trying to rest your buttocks on the deck. So finally, right to number five, 
is going to be an upward dog to a downward dog for those uh, who are yogis amongst us. So you're going to start in a plank. I'll show you the full variant. You press back to a downward dog, splaying the fingers, gripping into the mat. If you're tight in the hamstrings like me, you bend your knees, let the head hang. And as you come forward, we're going to go into an upward dog. So we're not going to sink all the way to the floor. We don't want to over compress the back. You go halfway down, squeeze the buttocks, draw the shoulder blades down the back, explode back. Come forward under control, not going too deep. Squeeze the buttocks, draw the shoulder blades down. Explode back, final one, come forward and explode back. If that's too much for your back, you can come forward to a plank and press back to a downward dog. Forward to a plank, back to a downward dog. Do one more. Good. If this is all too much for your wrists, you can always do this on your forearms. So you're probably only going to be really able to do the blow plank to what's known as a dolphin, pressing out and pressing back. It's hardest to get the little back bend into that, but it's, you can a little bit, but not very easily, uh, unless you decide to raise your forearms and put those onto blocks as another alternative. So that's right number five. So we do these five rights. Ideally, you do 21 of them, each right one after the other. And then when you've done that, that's you done. So ideal for a uh, morning routine. You can probably get all these done in about 10, 15 minutes, depending on how um, strong and fit you are and how easily you find them. Uh, if you need to start with a small number and work your way up through progression, I'd encourage you to do that. Remember, these are known as the fountain of youth. They are wonderful, a great way to start your day. And once you fuse those movements with the breath, you can find that it actually become quite mindful as well.